Hello everyone and welcome to my channel On The Hook Crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style. I hope you've had a wonderful, wonderful week. I have. I've had a great week. Uh, I don't remember everything that I did, but I do remember I didn't go very many places. I did go with Joe to a little quilt shop. Joe is my friend who makes the project bags, in case you're not sure who that is. And we went uh, out in the middle of what I consider nowhere, um, way back uh, in Cahutta, Georgia. And actually, the um, quilt shop is in Cleveland, Tennessee, but it's just right over the border of Georgia and Tennessee. So we traveled along the border and uh, ended up at this really neat quilt shop. And I'll show you a video of that here in just a few minutes because uh, Lana, who owns the, the quilt shop, is so friendly and wonderful. And their stock was amazing. And there were just every possible beautiful cotton fabric you can imagine. And uh, she's an expert quilter. She has a workroom where she actually quilts uh, binding and backing for quilts that maybe you want to make. If you want to make the front of the quilt and do all your beautiful designs and take it to Lana and she will quilt it for you. That means put the batting on and put the backing on and attach it around the edges. I cannot even imagine the skill you have to have to do that but she is an expert quilter so uh, that's just a little bit about her but later on we'll have a video with Lana and Joe and some other ladies in it as well um, I had a wonderful wonderful time with that today I have some sewing to show you I have a crochet surprise giveaway at the end of the video so be sure you stay tuned for that now first of all if you see behind me it is dark there is a huge thunderstorm going on right now but I had to record this now because I have some things coming up this afternoon so I thought I would go ahead but look at it's usually very bright and beautiful back here it is the middle of the day it is 10 minutes till 11 Eastern Time and there is absolutely no light coming in my windows so I thought that was very weird but I wanted to point that out because I'm not recording at night I'm recording in the middle of the morning so go figure I think it's just we've had so much rain lately and uh, today is no different it's a stormy stormy day but there are lots of things we can do inside and one thing we can do is to talk about crochet and also sewing and some other things too so grab your crochet project or your sewing or your cup of coffee or whatever and um, sit with me while we chat just for a second now to answer some questions I had earlier this week about my picnic time sweater. I am writing the pattern for it. I'm about halfway done, so I should have that done next week. And I'm excited about releasing it because it is quite a bit different from some of my other sweaters. And um, I love the, the yarn as well. It's a cotton yarn, so you might want to search for a nice cotton yarn in a size three or a four. I think either one would do well with this particular pattern. Um, the, the neck is a little bit wide on this because it's a summer sweater. It is not a winter sweater, so you don't need to stay warm in this. And the neck is cut a little bit wide and actually down just a tiny bit in the back. So that's different from my other sweaters, but I have designed her so that she dips down just a little bit in the back. And the optional directions will be to add short rows like I, des uh, I described them the other day but right here between this point and this point I'll lean her up here um, between here and here I added a whole section of short rows right here the original sweater was decreased down here for the neckline and if you like it that way that is awesome that is a summer sweater right there but I'm not as comfortable with a low back sweater as some folks might be so I added short rows here and in the pattern I will put the optional directions for those short rows from right about here to here now if you like a wide neckline as I do sometimes um, on this particular sweater well crystal just going everywhere <laughs> um, I on this sweater and I think I talked about this before the neckline on the sides were cut way down see where that original line is right there and I cut it way over really as an accident but I'm going to do this for the pattern I'm going to go ahead and cut it over in the pattern but I'm going to give you optional directions to either not cut it over in the pattern or to add those short rows if it's too far over now I, I'm not sure how much there's a little bit of ad-libbing that goes on here 
And if you're a good or immediate or even an advanced beginner crocheter, you can probably do those short rows very easily. And even a beginner can follow the directions and get those done. But you can do it either way. You can either cut it over originally in the neckline or you can just cut it up a little higher and not use the short rows for the shoulder area. So I just wanted to tell you that I'm going to write it um, both ways so that you know you can do it either way. Oh wait a minute Crystal come back. <laughs> I want to talk about one more thing. I wanted to show you my, well you uh, what I'm wearing is my golden cross sweater. I almost need a tank top under this. It's almost a little bit immodest but um, I wanted to show this to you. This is a uh, cotton sweater as well and um, I'll just show you a little bit of it. It doesn't have much ease in it. About three inches I think around, maybe four and very very comfortable for summer but I made it from cream cotton which is the loops and threads that you get at Michaels and there's the brand right there this is another color that I have but the color I'm wearing is mustard this color is called violet and I don't know if I'll ever make this or not I might make a golden cross in this because I actually made one out of a turquoise color of the the same yarn I bought three colors I bought this color I bought this color and I bought this mustard color and I made and I've worn this of course but I just wanted to bring this out and show it to you this is another sweater that I made from the Golden Cross pattern and really like it it has lots of interest in the body and the fabric if you're using a solid color it really shows off those pretty uh, cross stitch rows that you put in so um, that's one of my favorite sweaters for the summer it's very comfortable I like this it's very smooth it's smooth it's not scratchy and it's not heavy either so uh, I, I may make something out of this I'm not sure but right now I just wanted to show you the color that I used on this sweater and and one other thing the sleeves on this picnic time sweater everybody loved these sleeves I had so many people in the comments say they liked the way the sleeves look so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the pattern for the big sleeves and I wanted to show you the difference between those sleeves I had these on last Friday I guess it was last Monday and they are quite big and they're long so they're really cute they're right at the edge of the elbow and they're very modest and I really like these sleeves they're cool the air goes through them they're not fitted now in this sweater in the Golden Cross I tapered the sleeve down and you can see that it I started with a little bit of a smaller opening here and then I actually decreased so that the sleeves were very fitted to the top of my arm I did make them fairly long they're about halfway down my arm from here to here they're about halfway but they're very comfortable I don't have a problem with them at all but um, I do like a fitted sweater sleeve However, I like these too. And when I put this back on this year, I hadn't worn it in uh, a whole year. Uh, I had a lot of people say they love this, uh, the sleeves. If you get a nice cotton yarn that has drape, that's what you want. You don't want your sleeves sticking out like this. <laughs> you want something with drape in it. And um, you might make a swatch um, and use different um, size hooks. So if I used a kind of a large hook on this and I, I'll have to look it up to see which one it was. Probably a J, I'm guessing. Uh, I might have said that on Monday too, I don't know. But it looks like a J hook. And it, what that does is that opens up the weave. It really helps the garment to have lots of drape. So I wanted to show you the difference in this sleeve and this sleeve. They're totally different. And I will write the pattern as shown. And so everybody will enjoy having their picnic time sweater. <laughs> I've had lots of people ask me when I'm going to release it, so uh, it will be next week if I can get it all written down. I want to make sure I put all those optional directions in and that they're easy to follow as I try to do on every one of my patterns. So let's talk about works in progress. I have one work in progress that I'm almost finished with and I talked about it on Monday. This is the America Tank, uh, basically, but it doesn't look anything like the America Tank. This is the... Um, the sweater I'm making out of Cotton Fair, and here it is. You've seen that a thousand times. Cotton Fair Sunshine Day is the color, and it's a number two yarn, but it's cotton and acrylic. Very, very comfortable. Really nice drape. Look at that. It's just really, really nice drape to it. And I made the America Tank out of this, and I'll be wearing that on Monday because Monday is Memorial Day, so don't forget. This is 
uh, made just like it right now. Now I'm going to add some sleeves to this. I haven't done that yet. That's my last step. And I'm going to finish the, the neck. I'm not quite through. You can see stitch markers and everything. I'm still not finished with it. But I'm almost done. I've got it all sewn together. And I'm going to probably not put any more rows at the bottom. I'll probably just tie off those ends and leave it as is. But if I get ambitious, I might add some more rows to this because it's not quite as long as I would like it to be. And I'll show you right where it's going to hang. It's going to hang a little bit higher than my golden cross. And I'm, I'm not really sure. Well, I have to fix that. I'm not really sure if I'm going to add more to the bottom of this, but I might because this looks pretty with a single crochet um, multi-row finish on the neck. I really like the way that looks. Let me show you. Put my hand behind it. See how that looks? I really like that because the stitches are going this way. These are going this way. So it gives it a little bit of a different look. And so when I add the sleeve on, I'll probably add it on in the same stitch. And then at the bottom, I will probably put a row of single crochet, not row, I'll put multiple rows of single crochet around the bottom so that it will match the neckline and probably around the hem as well. And now that I have the weekend and I'm not rushed terribly, I can probably finish this and get it at least on crystal by Monday or maybe just wear it next Friday, I don't know. But since I already have the pattern out for this, I don't have the sleeves out there and if there's a lot to uh, describe then I'll do that in my video on Monday because this is made by the America Tank pattern and I'll be wearing the America Tank on Monday so uh, that's my work in progress at this point. Now we want to hear from Jo. She has a video about her new project bag and it's really neat so here's Jo. Good morning everyone this is Jo with Jo for Totes and I have another bag to show you today. This is another theme bag and uh, to introduce this bag, I thought I would play a little song that probably we all could sing by heart. So it's a Mickey Mouse bag. You guessed right. So let me uh, show you all the features of this bag when I get my computer fixed here. But um, this one goes to Martha in California. And um, she was a lucky one because this Mickey Mouse print is very hard to get. In fact, I had another customer who wanted a Mickey Mouse bag, and when it came in, it was an orange instead of a red background. So we chose not to use that one, but she got another beautiful bag. But this is a bag that um, has just red, black, and white in it. So I did something different with this bag. I had some ribbon. In fact, I have a lot of ribbon. And I used a little bit of the ribbon to accent the top of the pocket on the outside. And then I used some red and white dots on the inside and black and white on the outside. And this is the medallion that I made for it. I tried to do little Mickey Mouse ears. I don't think it turned out as, as well as I'd hoped for. Uh, this is the zipper pull on this bag, which is just black and red. And then on the inside, the only thing that Martha wanted was a, a zippered pouch. So on the zippered pouch, I used the same fabric that I used for the zipper binding on the top, which is a red with black and white dots and a little bit of gray. And so that's what the inside of the zipper pouch looks like. And I actually remember to put my name or, or the Joe totes on this. And then I have another little matching uh, pull uh, on this zipper. And the, and the top has a zipper closure instead of a snap. And then the bottom is a black with a little bit of gray in it that matches the the gray actually this is red black and white and gray on the outside of this bag so it all matches up very well and then i just did a very simple little stitch on the handles to keep them intact and sturdy so um this bag is going out today to martha and the next bag i'm making is one that we've also waited a long time for it's a western theme bag and uh, that fabric did not come in and was canceled so i and the uh and the lady who wanted that bag chose another fabric that I think will work out very nicely. I've changed my room around a little bit, as you can tell. I did a little bit, bit of redecorating. I painted this uh, metal file cabinet to match my chair. And an, then another file cabinet is over here. And I put this big board on top that I um, sanded down and put some polyurethane on. <clears throat> and I got all these three things at the rehab 
I think that's what they call it. It's the Habitat for Humanity rehab place where you can donate all kinds of uh, household things that you use to uh, refurbish a place or anything. Anyway, I got the whole thing for $15 and a little bit of paint and some varnish or some polyurethane. So I'm real happy with this. It looks out over the other side of my garden. I'm actually thinking about taking these shutters off because they don't give me the full view of one of my flower gardens. So next time it might be a lot brighter in here <laughs> when you see the next video. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. Uh, Jeannie and I are planning on going out tomorrow to do some fabric shopping. So I'll be making some more bags according to the fabric that I find tomorrow. So uh, have a blessed day and I will talk to you later. Bye. Thank you, Joe. That was so cute. I love Mickey Mouse. And you know what? That is an unusual bag. So uh, it'll, it'll just be one of a kind. And I really appreciate your custom bags. I really like those. If you're interested in ordering a bag, you can go down into the description box and email Joe. I'll put her email address there and you can start a conversation with her about that. Okay, now to the sewing part of our video. I want to show you what I've been working on. I talked about it on Monday and um, I wanted to get these three project bags done. These are not nearly as custom or as complicated as Joe's bags, but they are useful. And what I wanted to do was show you three different bags that I made for my grandsons. And I'm probably going to do some Etsy shop um, items. I'm not sure how many or what kind. I did find some really great fabrics at Lana's and um, I wanted to, well, first of all, let me show you the video for Lana's quilt shop. It's not very long, and it's just a little spit of time, but I just wanted to show it to you and let you kind of get an idea of what it's like to be there. Well, here we are at Lana's quilt shop and Joe is buying some fabric. Now, who's cutting it? I don't know your name. My name is Debbie. Debbie. Debbie's cutting the fabric. And Lana's going to make an appearance here in just a minute, I'm sure. I'm but happy to that. Here's Lana. <laughs> <Wiping down. laughs> Hi, this is this is Lana. She owns the quilt shop. Can you Hi. tell me a little bit about your quilt shop? Um, Where you're located? Or? I am located in South Bradley County near Red Clay State Park. I hope you enjoyed that. That wasn't very long, but I just wanted to show you that um, little visit I had to Lana's shop with Joe. We had a good time. Now. Uh, these fabrics I bought at Joann's and because I was in a little bit of a hurry last week I wanted to get this project in the works because I'm doing these project bags for my grandson so here's the first one this is for the baby and it's done in little trucks and the back is also done in the truck fabric isn't that cute I just love that it's so babyish and then I put a motorcycle as the zipper pull in this one so it just open he can just pull it open if he's able to i don't know he's only a few months he's only i guess 16 months old by now and he can pull that and it's rubberized it's very soft on your hands so i'm going to put a little couple of little books in here and give this to him next time i see him and hopefully that'll be soon the middle child he's four and I thought this would be really cute for him. He likes Snoopy, so here's Snoopy in the Stars and Stripes Forever. Um, let me turn that so you can see Peanuts right there. Isn't that cute? And then, of course, there's Snoopy here and there. There's no directional side to this fabric, so you can make it any way you want, which is kind of easy. <laughs> if you're making a project bag, you don't want it to be upside down. So that's the back of the bag. The front of the bag looks like this. I also use the red gingham here and a white zipper. And the zipper pull is a little dump truck. There's the front of the truck. See the little truck? And it's really soft and it helps them hold on to the zipper as they open it up. And I'll put a coloring book and maybe a puzzle in here for him because he loves to do puzzles. So that's what I'm giving to the middle child. And to the older boy who is six, I did a special bag with the names of the states on here and that's the inside of the bag and see the vinyls on the outside well, let me just open it up so you can see it this is the inside of the bag and then also the bands around the bag top around the zipper are done in the names of the states so he can look at these and learn how to see the states and pronounce them and then on the back is the panel that I bought at Joann's and it what it has is the whole United States the names of the states and also what they're famous for and I talked about that on Monday as well here's Hawaii and then Alaska's down here 
um, not in the right spot. <laughs> so I have to explain to him why that's down there. But in order to, to get this near the middle, I had to include those two states in different places. So we'll have to explain to him that that's not where they actually are. But that's what they look like, and there's a volcano on there. And then Alaska's over here with their um, um, beautiful flowers and fish. There's a fish on here because there's great fishing in Alaska. So that's what I did for him. And I just thought this was so interesting, and I hope it keeps his interest. And I will put some books that he can actually read because he's learning to read. I'm going to put some I Can Read books in there. I bought 28 of these on um, Etsy and what they are are I Can Read books by Weekly Reader and they're so interesting that the illustrations are beautiful and this one is called Tilly and Mert. It's a story about a skunk and a little mouse so I just thought that was neat and he can actually read and he said send that on to me Gigi because I can read it and so I'm going to do that. So that's what I'm doing. Those were my finished objects. I finished those up yesterday afternoon and I had already cut them out. I had to put interfacing on and so there's several steps that I had to take to get these done. I bought some fabric at Lana's quilt shop and I'm probably going to show that to you on Monday. I, I didn't have time in this video to get it all out of my bag and, and show you what I bought but I'm excited to, to make some project bags and I'll put them out there on my Etsy shop and um, if you're interested, let me know if you think you might like me to make some children's bags and some embroidery bags. And this is an example of an embroidery bag. I did two of these. I did uh, another one that's downstairs. I'm using it as a prototype. This is a little bit smaller, but the bags will have a coordinating fabric on the back and on the inside, and they'll have a vinyl front and a zipper. So that's what those are going to be, and um, I will probably make... A whole bunch of those and just put them on my Etsy shop once. I don't think I'm going to continue to make those, but you never know. I might be interested in doing that. It might be fun um, as a change from crochet. Now, as you know, I've had some uh, trouble with my hands and I really overdid it as y'all were telling me not to, but I did anyway. So I can still crochet. I'm working on this. This has not been a problem at all. And I think the most problem I had was with the larger yarn like this. Um, when I made both of these tops, the, the um, turquoise and the mustard color, my hands hurt so bad and I couldn't figure out what it was. But I think it's because when you hold a very large, this is larger than I used, but if you hold a very large crochet hook in your hand, I think that's harder on it than using a, for example, a, well, I didn't like a J, but an H hook, which is what I'm um, using to to do the um, trim in this particular uh, sweater. I used an eye hook to make this and I didn't have any trouble at all with my hands. But I was also very careful not to crochet all day or even two days in a row. I took some time in between. So you might try that if you're having hand trouble. I think uh, it's different for everybody and um, I like to, to change things up. I didn't do any of my embroidery this week. I was spending my time um, sewing and crocheting. So maybe next week I can work on that embroidery. Also, I had several comments from y'all about the full coverage embroidery that I was planning to do. And that was the light of the world, which was um, Jesus knocking on the soul of the heart. And it was very beautiful uh, painting. And I think I even got the painter's name incorrect. So I'll put that in the description box or I'll put it here on the I'll put it here on the video. Um, I said his name backwards. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Uh, a wonderful painter and uh, the symbolism is beautiful and there was a video down in the description box on Monday's uh, video that I did and I don't know how many of y'all saw it. It's a wonderful video. Just click on it and watch it. It's only you know five minutes or less and it's it's worth a watch. It's really worth it. So um, I have I'm I'm still working on trying to decide if I'm going to invest my money to make that full coverage beautiful painting. I even had uh, one nice lady offer to make it along with me, <laughs> which would be nice. We could be accountable to each other. Uh, and it's done in a huge, um, you know, what I would probably choose a little bit bigger fabric. It might be over a yard tall and very wide. And I'm thinking that's a huge project and I'm okay with that. I went out on the web and I looked for some inspirational full coverage uh, cross stitch pieces 
and there are very few out there, unfortunately, but I did find one called Lost No More, and it's a picture of Jesus sitting on a rock, and the two lambs are at his feet, and it's just a very poignant, beautiful um, kit, and it's done by Dimensions. It's in their gold collection, and it's done very, very beautifully. It's a full coverage, and it's also not as big. It's only about this big, like that. And I'm thinking about starting that one. And actually, I went ahead and bought it because it was hard to find. The only other one I could find was in Russia. And uh, I didn't really want to order anything from Russia the way the world is working now with the uh, flights and all being canceled. So I bought it from a uh, an Etsy shop. And she is in the United States. So I went ahead and bought that. There was only one left. And it was about $55, I think. And to me, a little bit more manageable as far as the money and the size and the scope of the project. So I'm going to do that one first. I think that's what I've decided. But as soon as I finish that, I'm going to order the Light of the World. And I'm going to just use that as my ongoing uh, cross-stitch project. I might do some during the week. I might not do any. But I'm going to try a different technique than parking the strands and I know if y'all are um, embroiders or cross stitchers you know what that means where you pull um, where you work a color in a square a 10 by 10 square and when you're through working the color you move to the next square and start it with that color start go to that colors symbol and just pull your needle out and leave the strand there and to me that seems like a huge project and then I found someone on the web who doesn't do that uh, they still do full coverage cross stitch, but they they just finish off their threads uh, and work them as they see fit. And that's more my style, <laughs> you know, just going all over the place and putting the cross stitches where they go and then finishing it off because on the back it doesn't really matter. It's going to be framed and nobody will see that. So that's probably the way I'm going to approach that particular project. But I'm going to try it first on the Lost No More project and then I will move to the Light of the World. I, I'm pretty much decided that's what I'm going to do because I went ahead and bought Lost No More. So that's my plan for embroidery. Okay, so now is the end of the video and I'm going to select the winner for the crochet surprise box i've talked about it a couple of times this is what it looks like it has a project in it for a table runner and it's worked with kobu yarn very lovely and um, i'm excited to give this away a lot of people said they would love to have it and some wanted the table runner some were going to use it for a scarf or a shawl so it's up to the winner how they use it but i hope you enjoy it whoever wins this so i'm going to turn the camera to the computer and let's see who wins the crochet surprise box okay so here we are at our computer and i have put the um, url right here for the uh, monday was a week ago the video that we did on the crochet surprise gift box and the um, keyword was runner so if you put runner in your comment then you are in this list so let's see if we can find the youtube comments that people that actually um, signed up to be in this giveaway. So we have 523 people who are in the running for this crochet surprise box. So let's go over here and find out who wins the crochet surprise box. And that would be Sandra Ray. Sandra Ray, you have won the crochet surprise box. I'm excited for you and Let's see what she says. That is a beautiful table runner. Thanks for the opportunity to win. So Sandra, thank you for participating. Thank you everyone for participating in the giveaway this week. Congratulations to the winner. I'm excited. If you will email me your mailing address, I will get that right out to you. So congratulations and thank you everyone for commenting, for joining in, for coming on all my projects that I have going for all the advice. I've had so many wonderful suggestions from my viewers and subscribers and I appreciate every single one. Every now and then I'll put great suggestions but I think they're all great and sometimes when I'm in a hurry I will just heart your comment but that means that I have read it and I have enjoyed it. I have read it and enjoyed it. So just know that your comments are being read and I do appreciate each and every one. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to this channel. I know y'all hate hearing all that, but I would love for you to like the video. It tells YouTube that 
you liked it and that they might send it to other people who might be able to enjoy it as well. And you can share it. And I, I'm hoping that you will join the community down below. Um, I'll be releasing a pattern next week and you'll be the first to know about it. You'll get an email uh, in your email box with a substantial discount for that particular pattern that I'm releasing. So be sure to join the community. It's real easy. Just go down in the description box and follow the directions. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I will be back on Monday and we will talk about some crochet. We'll talk about Memorial Day and I'll be wearing my America tank. So if you have something patriotic, be sure to wear it on Monday because it's a day when we honor our military who have paid the ultimate price for us and for our freedom. So um, we look forward to seeing you on Monday. I hope you have a great weekend and join me again when we find out what's on the hook.